BBC Radio 1. Bring Me The Horizon are one of the biggest rock bands in the world. They formed all the way back in 2004 when they were just teenagers and since then have released five albums, each one notably different and notably more successful than the last. The Sheffield Five Piece have a huge reputation for playing live and for the first time ever they'll be headlining festivals in the UK this summer. Their sixth album, Ammo, is a brilliant, sophisticated production and a seismic moment for rock music in the UK and beyond. I've come to their home studio here in Sheffield to spend some time with Ollie Sykes and the band are going to play us some songs as well. Ollie Sykes, hello. Hello. Thank you for having me here at the church. No worries. Um, how are you feeling? How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Cheers. So 2019 is 15 years of Bring Me The Horizon. What's the secret? How do you, how do you stay together as a band for that long? When I went through stuff with drugs and went to rehab and all that, uh, it was kind of like the, the, the make or break point for the band. You know, there was a time where it just didn't feel like it was going to continue. When was that time um, in your chronology? It's about seven years ago. So just after There Is A Hell. Yeah. So it was, I think it was about 2012. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And that was just when like, you know, we could go out and tour the world all year if we wanted to. We, we did reasonably good in every single territory. We just didn't know how to say no. And we burnt ourselves out and, you know, we really had stopped enjoying it in terms of like, no one wanted to play shows. No one wanted, you know, everyone had kind of, not fallen out, but there was, you know, mm. there was just a disconnection between everyone. And going to rehab, getting clean and, you know, when I came back out, I was just like, I'm gonna try and find something else to be addicted to. and. It was music, you know, so I just put, put myself in there and just, just went, I, I'm going to learn how to sing. We're going to make the best record ever, do you know what I mean? Because it was so on the brink of it never happened again. It was almost like my way of saying sorry to everyone, like I'm going to prove, you know, because I put them through so much stuff and sorry just didn't seem to cut it. So like, I'm going to really try, you know, and do the best I can. That's when I met Jordan, it was just, and he was in a similar place where he just really wanted to make music, do you know what I mean? We just loved it as well, do you know what I mean? It just reignited all, you know, we all became so much more connected than we had been for years. And, you know, I had all these other friends that I realized weren't my friends really, do you know what I mean? I had them around for all the wrong reasons and I was like, this band here, they're my best friends, do you know what I mean? They always had been. And it's stupid to say something that horrible could, you know, could make us more close, but it did and it, and it it just made us realize that it's the gig, it's the, the high, and it's the it's the music and all that, and you don't need any of that stuff. And I don't think we'd be here if it weren't for that kind of little crossroad point in, in our career. It changed my life, really. It's like a way of life, not music. And before that, I didn't have any interest in music, and I didn't really have any friends. And that changed with rock music, and I just think it's such a cool thing that, that it, it can become part of your life like that. And for me, the bands that did it were bands that were accessible and stuff, and it got me into heavier bands. And, I like the fact that we have a, a catalogue where, you know, you get a lot of people that get into like a, maybe that's a spirit or some paternal and stuff or some of the new songs and then they go back, you know, mm. it's almost like a little breadcrumb trail where people will yeah. start off with maybe like medicine or whatever. Before they know it, they like mantra. life and they go back and then they start to really get into the vibe of the band and you know it's not just about how poppy it is or yeah. how accessible it is but you know they really feed into the the lyrics and what we're you know what we stand for and stuff like that so yeah I mean we're not we're not you know we're not ashamed to be like we, we want to be that band we want to be that gateway band for people to get into mm. rock music and stuff and, mm. and keep it going what would you say to your to yourself 15 years ago you know, when we first started I, I had no musical experience whatsoever like I didn't do any music lessons or also well when we first did a gig what it had monitors we were just like what are these here and they're like monitors <laughs> I was like what do they do and they were like your sound comes through there like all right and I remember like they were like going is your sound all right and I like um just just to look like I knew what I was doing like could you turn my vocals up a bit and they were like because you thought yeah, that's what you had yeah, to yeah say. so so yeah. then you got and then I'd go, yeah, that's fine. Like, I haven't done all yet. Do you know what I mean? Like, you, and it was just every every part of the way were just like metronomes and yeah. just everything, cabs and guitars and everything. I just absolutely had no idea. I used to yeah. call like the cymbal the snare and yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So to say if someone came back and went, you'll be producing bands and doing it all yourself, I, I wouldn't even understand what the word yeah. meant. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's really hard to know. 
album coming on Friday then, sixth album. Mm -hmm. Let's start with you um, kind of talking me through the inspiration behind the name, Amo. It's like Portuguese for I love, uh, and my wife is Brazilian, speaks yeah. Portuguese. Um, and as the album started coming together, it really started to feel like all the songs were about love. Yeah. And I would kind of just try not to overthink it. And I was almost thinking I might just call the album Love or something, but just, I guess when I say I love you to my wife, it's yeah. a GMO. So um, Ammo felt cool because it, I guess, also had this little double meaning about am ammunition for the album. Um, and an old Portuguese, like English, uh, European Portuguese, sorry, uh, means like master, which also had this like almost other meaning to it. Yeah. So it just started to feel, I don't know, it was kicking around and I kind of like confided in one of my friends when I was showing him the music because, you know, when we write an album after a while, you start to lose kind of perspective. perspective. Yeah. And um, not that I was hating the album, but I was like, I don't know if we've got anything here and stuff. And I kind of one night, showed like a close friend that I trust, you know, his opinions and stuff like that. And I showed him all and he was absolutely blown away. And as I was showing him the songs, I kind of said, like, have you got a name for the album? And I said, oh, I was kind of thinking Ammo, but I don't know if it's, you know, mm. and all this stuff. And he almost like shed a tear. <laughs> and he was yeah. like, you've got to call it that. I kind of told him why and stuff. And mm. yeah, he's just, and I was like, oh, fine. If it, yeah. if it got that kind of emotion out of him, then yeah, I'll just go with that. Yeah. And how does your writing process work? Um, in terms of the chron chronology of it, do you go to the band with lyrics that you've written? Do you wait to hear stuff? How does it work? Um, different ways, to be honest. Yeah. Like sometimes it will start with a lyric or a melody, and I'm like, I've got this idea, and I want to like base it around this. Or we just start. We can start with anything. Start mm. with synth. Can start with guitar. Mm. Can start with a drum beat. Sometimes we'll come in inspired by a cement and say, I think we should write a song like this, or you know, try and make it come across in a certain way, or mm. you know, maybe it's one way we go. We should think about it just live and how it would sound live and mm. you know how the crowd would interact with it and stuff so yeah we approach it in all different ways and this room is where you wrote most of ammo mm -hmm. yeah how does it feel sitting in here like do you have happy memories of that of that period of time um i wouldn't say happy <laughs> <laughs> uh no it was a lot of work this album like we spent like a year on it wow um, and that's longer than normal yeah i mean yeah. that's a spirit we wrote in about two months wow. um and this record it just took a lot longer, but we knew it would because we kind of like said to ourselves, it's not going to be the same kind of record. And, you know, we're not going to use the things that made us popular again. Like we wanted to do everything different and um, yeah, not repeat ourselves and push ourselves and I kind of take a lot of creative risks and stuff like that. And um, so it just took ages to find those sounds and, you know, mm. for it to all click when we go into it. The only thing we ever say is like, we're just going to make it different. We don't know what it's going to be, but it's not going to be the same album as the last one. Yeah. We want to make it different. It has to be different. So we know it's going to be hard, but at the same time, we know it's always worked for us. Like mm. as much as like it's scary and like you don't know how people are going to react. It's always been like what makes us, you mm. know, I think the fact that every time we bring an album out, it is different is is almost something you come to expect from our band. So you guys produced it yourselves mm -hmm. once again. Um, what was the kind of vision going into it in terms of the creative vision? Did you have, you, kn you knew you wanted it to be different, mm. but was there a style or, a, or an inspiration or something that you thought we wanted to, to go that way or go down that path? Not really in terms of like a clear, a clear vision. I think one thing we knew we wanted to do is really kind of bridge that gap between the rock elements of what we do and you know the electronic elements and, yeah. and really blend it to a point where a, like there's so much electronic stuff on yeah, there. yeah. really dancey a bit yeah. but the thing is as well there's a lot of guitar but you yeah. just it's we we did it we merged it in such a way that it is really hard to tell them yeah. apart do you know what i mean yeah, so whereas okay, so whereas people might think there's less guitar on there it's not it's just i think the way we've put them together this time yeah. is really like you can never tell yeah um so there's guitars doing things that you would only really associate with like trance music or yeah. you know electronica in the past and, and we're doing it on guitar so it is and i think that was really important for us to keep pushing that element probably a horrible question you're gonna hate me for what's your favorite track off the album would you what, what one do you go to when you're listening back nihilist blues okay why it's, that one um kind of for the reasons we've just been talking mm. about in in that kind of like merging it together and making something that sounds completely different to anything we've done before but yeah. doesn't at all turn its back on anything we've done before as well and just um for me, I've always loved like kind of like euphoric 90s Euro dance mm. kind of stuff. It's like, not a guilty pleasure, but it's just always been something like I've kind of raised like my dad had a very schizophrenic taste in music, but that was one thing he always listened to, like Snap and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and I've just always had like, I don't know, 
a kind of like passion for that kind of stuff and yeah. it weren't something I'd ever imagine we'd bring it into our band, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that was our first like successful attempt at doing it yeah. and I just, I just, when I hear that song, I'm just like, this doesn't sound like anyone, you know no. what I mean? And, I, and I, I really feel that. And I guess having Grimes on it as well, who was an artist that I really look, you know, look up to and respect is, is just, it's just a really cool story for me. When I look back on that, it's like, I, it just makes me feel like so many positive mm. thoughts and, and evolution. memories. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. And what, tell me about Grimes then. So what is it about her as an artist that made you want to collaborate with her? You know, she does everything Kassan. You know, if she wants to learn how, if she wants guitar on her album, she'll learn how to play guitar. You know, she mm. produce it all herself. She, she's like one of those people that are an artist in terms of everything she makes and does. It's not, it's not so much about like, you know, going and showing off her voice in, in like an athletic way almost, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I, I kind of connect with that where it's just like, sitting in a room and making music and pushing yourself to your hardest until you've got something you're really proud yeah. of. Um, and she directs her own videos and just just her general vibe. I, I guess my favorite music is like female fronted electronica and avant-garde pop and stuff. And for me, she's just kind of like our, of, of this generation, the queen of that. What was working with her like? Was it what you thought it would be like? Not really. I mean, we didn't even think she'd do it, to be honest. Yeah. Like I'd, I'd seen an uh, interview she did with NME, like, uh, saying oh i really like english bands like bring the horizon and falls and i kind of thought i wonder if she would just cut off guard and she just saw an enemy cover there with us on the front and she's like yeah. i can't think who to say so when we were thinking about guests for the record she was the top of the list mm. she just sent me like visual representations of the song and just she just kind of went off and sometimes she'd just text me at random times and just be like this song though is amazing so <laughs> it was ideal it was amazing for yeah. us because we were in la at the time eight nine months down the line mm. and like i said about losing perspective, it was all gone, do you know what I mean? As much as I love this track, Nihilus Blues, I was just like, are people gonna get this? Cause it is, with that's the spirit we never had that I, I was quite confident this is mm. gonna make our band bigger. People mm. are gonna like this record, do you know what I mean? Mm. Whereas with songs like Nihilus Blues, I'm like, what, who is this for? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If this is not for people who just like rock music or metalcore or metal or whatever, this is, this is for someone who likes something a bit more, do you know what I mean? So you just start to get scared and I think her, just backing of it and you know mm. her like real not just like this is a cool song but her like just kind of like over the top i absolutely adore this song was yeah. just like yes we're on on the right path sort mm. of thing so it was almost at a turning point for the record mm. are you in a position where you would want to produce for other people i know there was a thing where you nearly produced limp biscuits mm. album would you want to do that more not, you're well not good after at that it. experience <laughs> all um, right okay but yeah it's hard because you know you, you have a vision but then yeah so it's all right when it's your music because it's like you know, you can just be like, no, this is how it's gonna be. And with me and Jordan, you know, we might we might argue sometimes on how we want stuff, but we all but we always come down for it to be like we have quite a similar taste. So mm -hmm. in the end we, we agree. Whereas if you go into someone else's, you know, project, how do you tell them that what that you know, that they could do this better or, mm -hmm. you know, you might see it one way, but then you've got to not only tell them that idea, but then get them to agree to it and then get them to actually execute it. Mm -hmm. I just think God, that must be so much hard work. I think I'd have such a desire to impress as well that maybe I'd use some of my ideas that I was saving for myself or mm. I could tell that I'd be drained completely when it comes to doing our record and I wouldn't ever really want to kind of jeopardize that. Sacrifice so it, I don't yeah. know. Obviously if the right act or artist came around and it seemed like a really cool thing to do maybe, but. Mm. Um, but something did come out of that session, right? The Wonderful Life. Yeah, yeah. So that was mm -hmm. something positive came of that. Yeah, totally. And it was a positive experience anyway. It was yeah. really cool. And obviously, like, Limp Bizkit, when I first got into rock music, Limp Bizkit were like, you know, Fred Durst and that were my idols, you yeah. know what I mean? So just even sat there with him and listening to all these, all these stories and, you know, mm. just being there, like, you know, one of his contemporaries rather than, like, a, a fan. Well, mm. I was, you know, a fan as well, but, like, it's just a bit of a one of those, like, imagine telling. I wouldn't even understood what that meant, you know what I mean? When I first listened to Limp Bizkit, someone went, you know, in 15 years, you're yeah. going to be producing that band, I'd be like, what does producing mean? Getting the tour of this place, like it feels like you do have this amazing DIY attitude where, where you've got this kind of self-confidence where you're just gonna go and try stuff for yourself. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? It's always worked for us in mm. terms of like, we've always done it ourselves and like, we didn't have a clue what we were doing when we started, but some of it kept taking us along the way, do you know what I mean? Yeah. We got signed and, you know, we, we went to America. And even when we first went to America, we did well. And like, yeah. some of it just 
helped us along the way. And I think so, I think we just trusted ourselves and this is the best thing in the world we could be doing. So yeah. let's put our money into it. Let's take that jump. Let's take that risk. Let's not just, you know, save all our money. And, mm. or, you know, when we go out on tour, we want it to be the best show ever. So even if we're coming home and we've not made any money because we put it all into our production, it's like, yeah, but how good is them shows going to be? Yeah. It's going to be like skydiving every night, you know, <laughs> it's going to be an adrenaline rush. And I think that's the way we've always looked at it. So you've got to kind of be like that. You've got to kind of be confident that it's going to go further and it's yeah. not going to end in two years or it's three years or whatever. Mm. And what, what would you say now, 15 years down the line is your measure of success? as a band? I think the Royal Albert Hall show that we did, mm. I think as a, as a collective band, I think we're all really, we we're really stoked on that. It's such a like iconic place to play and it was from Teenage Cancer Trust and we played it in orchestra and it felt musical and we felt like I don't know, just it made it for me, it made us feel like a proper band. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I don't think we ever feel like that. That's so interesting. Why not though? Because you're such a massive celebrated band. I don't know. I think it's just a dangerous way to, to think. Yeah. Bands aren't like Metallica and stuff like now, where, you know, they're just they're there and they'll never go. You've always got to fight, I think, to, to, to stay relevant and to stay in the scene and to, you know, to be there. Cause, and I think. I think too many bands make that mistake where they're like, we're massive now. And before they know it, the, you know, the back where they're starting and stuff, mm. we've always just felt like we're not, we're not the next big thing. We're not the next big band. We're not, I think it's just a good way to, yeah. for us, it's just a good way to be. The idea of always feeling like the underdog, mm -hmm. you have to try and yeah, yeah. prove something yeah. in a way. Yeah. So 2019 is looking good. You've got your first festival headline show in London, mm -hmm. All Points East, yeah, you're creating yeah. the day as well. The lineup we're doing, we were really surprised to be asked for it because, you know, it's like Bonnevere and, you know, last year was like Bjork and stuff like that. Amazing so it's like lineups, just yeah. artists that I like never thought we'd be like mm. rubbing shoulders with. And for us, that's more important than, you know, just being the headliner at the biggest festival. I think it, for us, we want to be more associated with just, you know, new people who like music and it's not mm. about what genre and it's not about what's, you know, current. It's just about. Mm. I like music and I like these I like these artists. So for us to be involved in that feels really cool and really exciting. And mm. I think it gets across our personalities a bit more, the fact that, you know, we have a say who plays that day and stuff because mm. we want to be more associated with just other artists rather than just rock bands. That's our kind of mission is is, is to make rock music more accessible and cross over and, and, and work with other artists and stuff and and make people like stuff that they never, you know, would have thought they would have liked. Ollie, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for having me.